wait till the night before Christmas to be good. And in three, two, one. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Prehistoric Podcast. This is episode three in the ninth annual 12 Pods Ads of Christmas. Lots of numbers. Uh, I'm your host, Fumpf. <laughs> and I'm one of your hosts, Andrew Sorsdahl. We've got Francois Denition running the ones and twos, making everyone look awesome, sound awesome. We'll give it up for Fran in the back there. Um, I've never done that before. He's completely unapologetic. Uh, today we are joined by uh, the members of the Sit Down Podcast, among other things. Uh, introduce yourselves in your native tongues. Uh, please go ahead. Mon nom est Joël Guedet de le Sit Down Podcast. En ik ben Mark Poppen, ook uh, van de Sit Down Podcast. En ik uh, ben blij hier te zijn. I love it. Wonderful. <laughs> the first time anybody bilingual Multi, on the podcast. Multilingual podcast this year for the first time ever. Uh, yes, this is Mark and Joël. Um, they are dear friends of ours. Um, they are uh, huge contributors to... Um, kind of a group we built in the music scene and and are continuing to move forward with that. And they have their own podcast. Tell us a little bit about your program. Uh, the show, well, our show has been running for like, I think we're coming up on three years. We just did like 100 and, what was it, 45th? 42. Or, we just finished our 142nd episode. We Actually, do, by the time this goes out, it's probably 150 something. Yeah, we do it once a week. And <clears throat> it just kind of evolved into what it is today where we're at a point right now where it's every week we've got like an indie artist sometimes some bigger names like on the scale but uh we just really hang out with them for an hour try and find out what like what makes them tick their origin stories kind of and how they do things in the business or where they're steered that's really all it is and joel's the chatty one right. chatty i i think um our podcast did originally start out as a more <laughs> frequently than christmas podcast <laughs> Um, we got to 100 episodes. It was it was also a really good way for us to like, at least how I looked at it was like it's an easy way we can pump an easier way that we can pump out content and regularly. really hone our skills and hone our skills yeah. and also just like it's really tough to ask someone to just oh just relax in front of the camera if you have never been in front of the camera and never have any of that experience. Mm -hmm. So because we we kind of have had that experience and have been been in front of the camera a little bit, it's easier to communicate to other clients who might be nervous or find themselves, you know, struggling to be natural in front of the camera. So, yeah, I think our big jump was last year was our first time with a switcher. Francois, can you confirm or deny? I remember that. The answer is yes. Um, so we kind of decided we're going to start doing this thing annually at Christmas. Um, it's a little bit slower of a season for us, especially because we get really busy like we were at the end of October this year because everyone wants to film outside before the snow hits. So our schedule gets really, really compact. This is a nice way for us to kind of unwind. Um, and now we kind of took the step, invested in the equipment we want to make the editing and pr production of the show way, 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 way easier than it used to be. It was absolute fucking hell when we used to do it. Wasn't there one of the first ones you guys did that never aired? Uh, the very first episode never aired. And then the... That was technical difficulties mostly because we were in a car. And like in a car. No, no, no. The Centurion podcast oh, was the that, first one right, ever. Right, 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 right. Where right. we got way too drunk. We've also that's had the one, that's the one I was talking about. We've also yeah, had yeah. episodes like eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, <laughs> some years that have never come out. Yeah. Or that they like <laughs> yes, they exist as far as our numerical ranking system is concerned. <laughs> uh I think we're th three or four years where we've not missed an episode. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think we're like four years in where They've all come out scheduled on time properly. Um, I think the other thing is like, we were busy and like when we started this thing, all three of us lived in a two bedroom basement suite with my fiance. <laughs> so um, we didnn't have as much of, we other didn't have the equipment and the infrastructure and the, you know, the, we weren't as, as scheduled. And now when we've taken on such a large breadth of work, if we weren't organized like we are now, we wouldn't ever be able to pull it off. Yeah. 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 Um, so you kind of know what you're doing. Now. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's we, like, we, we very quickly learned that we needed to film them in November to get them out for December and like trying to film them in December. It's like, if you're trying to release 12 podcasts, it gives you like, 
at the best 12 days to film 12 yeah. of them. And so it's like, yep. there's not, there just wasn't logistically a way to make that how, work. How did you, how do you like that switcher, Fran? I've seen you use it quite it's frequent. Amazing. We love it. Like we all, it's, it's, it lets us do, there, there's a bunch of stuff that we just wouldn't be able to do if we didn't have the switcher. Like, Cutting between, if, if we were just recording on all these angles, that means you would essentially need to watch back the podcast mm -hmm. four different times mm -hmm. to cut <laughs> to mm -hmm. the right angle. You know what I mean? Yeah. And what, because we have the switcher, it lets us go from from that angle to that angle <laughs> to that angle <laughs> to that <laughs> angle. And we, we have a live edit, right? So like by the end of this thing, we're, Fran is cutting back and forth between angles as people are speaking. So when we're done, all we have to do is like trim the ends off of it and, right. and yeah. then put our intro in and then boom. We're right. So Fran is like a manual zoom. Yeah. Very much. Yeah. 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 Uh, no. Well, the way we Speaker do, view. the way we have done ours, it's, I mean, it's always different, but a lot of the episodes, we, what was that name of that program? It's like DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve, yeah. yep. Mm. And like I can upload multiple videos on, on the feed and then I can just, have like the three <coughs> camera shots there and then just do my cuts in the program. Yeah, that's so that's I'm not having to like watch it in full three times. It's all synced well, together and then I just eliminate what I don't need. But I right? think it's a little easier for us because we only have one guest usually. That's true. Yeah. That's this true. this being able to cut and do like a live edit just makes it it's as I, I think the big thing for me especially is when we were doing this more regularly uh, and and this will hopefully be something when we when we get into a space and we can get more equipment again. But, have an intern that but, sets everything up. But and, yeah, that's yeah. the thing. Like fucking dragging all of our equipment down. And when we would do a, a podcast in September, it's like, all right, we're shooting Friday. Now we got to pack everything up, do it Saturday, and then two days later we're pulling everything back out again. It was just back and forth, and back and yeah. forth, and back and mm -hmm. forth. Yeah. And then also trying to get the edits done. And it's kind of I I've, I do this relation all the time, but it's like the mechanic who has the the clunk in his car or the dentist kids with bad teeth. Yep. When we're out filming all the time, the last thing we want to do is get home and edit our own shit. Yep. So this is so easy because it's like, it's done. The edit's already over. Yep. yep. And now it's like, yeah. And and it, and it maintains the quality that we need. I think most podcasts are consumed. Uh, oh, God. Uh, uh, audioly? Audioly. Uh, audibly. Uh, audibly. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, so the video production quality isn't necessarily that important. But when we're... Like this ultimately ends up being in a way it's like a demonstration of our video capabilities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when it looked like shit before, it looked bad on yeah. us, especially. Um, because that was like, isn't that your thing to make it? Even though a lot of people don't realize, well, no, but when we come film your video, we're focused with one camera on one subject thing, not yeah, so this is so style. different than what yeah, what we do for work. Yeah. You, this the only similarity is that you have cameras. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So how did the Sit Down Podcast come about? Huh. Okay, so I run uh, Funky Moose Records, which is an online record store, and I wanted to add uh, a podcast as a, uh, a means to market the business. Joel and I have been friends for... Ever. Months. Ever. Forever. Months, <laughs> yeah, days. Yeah. <laughs> Who's this guy? <clears throat> um, and uh, uh, he's, in, he's into comedy podcasts like YMH and that. Shit. All that crap. <laughs> yeah. I uh, so we, we were... Don't be stingy, Mark. Come yeah, on. yeah. Come on, Mark. <laughs> we've, we've always been talking about music and, and you know, trying to find ways to, to promote the business. And then one one day we were like, why don't we just grab a camera? The, the running joke is that I want it for marketing purposes and Joel wants to be famous. <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> now I want to be rich and famous. Yeah. <laughs> That's evolved as well. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, we, for the first episode, we literally grabbed our laptops, put it on our laps, uh, grabbed a camera, put it on the tripod, and and figured it out. Man. And figured it out. It was it was literally it. we didn't know what we're doing, but let's start. And then episode what 13, 14, we got an email from an artist saying, "Hey, I like what you guys are doing. Can I be a guest?" And we're like, "Somebody's actually watching this." <laughs> <Right>. Okay. <laughs> So uh, that was Paris. Paris Pick. Shout out to Paris. And uh, I, uh, to this day, I still call her like the godmother of the show. Yeah. Because if it wasn't for her, for that's happening, like we wouldn't be 
where we are today. You wouldn't like, have your format. It, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So she gets all the credit, in my opinion. Yeah, so we figured out how to do things. And um, then we were like, okay, if we want to do more of this, we need to reach out to people because they're not coming to us. Well, this one just happened to do come out to us. But yeah. I mean, so we wanted to do it on a weekly basis. Uh, we reached out to a few people that we knew and they were gracious enough to, to come on the show. And then... Uh, it started happening like every week we had a guest and either we invited them or they reached out got, to us. It, that's when it got like really, really fun is when they were hitting us up. Yeah. Like, hey, we saw this. Like, can we come on? And we're like, let's go. Yeah. Hell yeah. You yes. Can. That's, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. One thing that I really think is awesome about the sit down podcast versus what we do. Especially, obviously, you guys do it routinely, which is awesome. And that gives you a bit of a more of a marketing tool. This is more like uh, at this point for us. A, a great way for us to sit down with our friends, recap our year, and get to do this thing that we do enjoy doing, just, you know, in a way more it. contained. I love podcasts. In way more yeah. of a contained space. But what I think is brilliant about Sit Down Podcasts, especially what you guys are doing is, and we found this ourselves, when, when we bring guests mm -hmm. on or when you guys bring guests on, it just opens the audience up a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. Yeah. Because yep. Yep. they're sharing it to an audience that you're completely alienated from otherwise. Mm -hmm. And it's like... It's a very trickle effect. It's like, ah, oh, an extra person here, an extra person there. But yep. it all adds up. Yep. And I think, especially with podcasts, like, you got to just keep doing it. You just have to keep fucking doing it and doing it and doing it. You have and to do you it because you had, love it. Yeah. And you guys have had, like, bigger name artists mm -hmm. on, which I think is mm -hmm. fucking awesome. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, you it's, want to tell them about Well, it's pretty gnarly on how we get it. Like, I'm not your most conventional person like i'm not really no. into like fucking emails and all that shit like that's I'm, me. i'll just come up to i'll hit you up on instagram or whatever and just do it humbly just whatever i don't give a shit and joel's not the dear whoever reads this right yeah to whom it may concern yeah, yeah. i'm just the same a backdoor guy you know? <laughs> um but uh yeah do it when i ended up one of my proudest ones was theory of a dead man and the way That's i got dude i know right um so shout out to those guys for being just cool as shit man uh they they had a podcast going on during the pandemic i i pretty sure it's not happening anymore it's called band meeting podcast and you know i'm a fan of them and stuff so I, I follow them on instagram and stuff and there was one day where tyler's just like hey if you have any questions for the show just you know send us a 15 second clip or whatever and we'll play it on the show it's something just very simple so i did that i put together this quick little 15 second clip including bloopers yeah <laughs> blasting in little cuts and stuff in our podcast logo and i'm like hey do you guys want to i'd known that they had weapons on their tour, like pre-pandemic, right? That was like right before the pandemic. And there was like this little running joke where they had like called them W3 Apons, right? right? Like so silly, but that's all I said. I was like, hey, I know you guys know weapons, our boys weapons from Saskatchewan here. And would you guys come on the show and clear up this little, like why you guys called them W3 Apons? Something simple like that. I don't remember exactly how- well, You I make it personal. It. Yeah, and and like really quick, like within a day or two, we had gotten a reply, and they're like, "Yeah, we'll come on," and we're just like, "Holy fuck, we just booked Theory of a Dead Man!" Like, what do we do now? So yeah, that that's all it was. It was just as simple of sending a quick fifteen second video that he put on his podcast, and um, and and they they followed through. You know, it's one thing to say, yep. "Yeah, we'll come on," but they actually did. And mm -hmm. uh, so just little shit like that, you know, who, what's another, the, the sheepdogs of, uh, I got those through uh, Twitter. Um, they tweeted about something and I replied and I said something along the lines of, Hey, we run a podcast. You want to talk about this thing? And I don't remember what the thing was, but you want to talk about this thing on our podcast? And uh, the reply was like, yeah, sure. Send us a DM. I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fuck, so please. I sent him a DM and. A couple of weeks later, we had him on the show. Yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. great. Yeah, so many, a lot of freaking cool things have happened as a result of that podcast. Yeah, for sure. Though, like that's a great example of the good side of social media and what it yep. can do. Like having access and direct commute, line of communication, uh, to actually these be people. able to connect you to people. And it's mm -hmm. not just like trying to send a letter to like. Yeah. Some unknown manager to, that hopefully... Some program director yeah. to get your song spun on the radio well, that's we have, never going to freaking reply to We've had you. that too, where, you know, there's there's this artist that we want on the show and then you reach out and all, all of a sudden some manager replies to you and say, oh, well, how many followers do you have? And 
whatever, whatever, because they want to run the numbers and see if it's worth it. It's like, well, if you're doing that, then it's then we don't want you on the show. Then too bad. They're not yeah. coming on. Yeah. yeah, fair enough. I think that's great. Um, but yeah, so many cool. Like, I'll give you another example of it. We had Sky Wallace on. I don't know if you guys are familiar with her. She's from Tor an artist out of Toronto. A very awesome, awesome girl. Great cool, performer. Yeah. Anyways, we had her on episode forty-five. I think it was. And that would have been close to two years ago. And she just played Saskatoon and I just got to meet her for the first time. I'd stayed in contact with her. You know, we'll hit each other up on Instagram every like not all the time. I just mean once in a blue moon kind of thing. Um, but shit like that, like I got to meet her in person and she knew who I was. And like, you know, we got to talk and That's I don't cool. know, just like getting going to events and stuff like which we do quite frequently. And now the artists that we've because of having on the show and stuff like they knew who we are and they're coming up to us and it's like i'm a hugger so i'm like just hugging everybody all the time and it's exciting for me man i get a kick out of it and i don't I, plan on stopping i remember recently with uh brayden brayden king when when you said you wouldn't be there for the show and we walk in together at the cap and he's like holy fuck yeah, no, I, I love that shit. It's all it's all about that. I, I've yeah, I've done that to a few artists before. Where I'm not saying I'm anybody special. I'm I don't think like that at all. But it's fun for me. It's, From it's a like, guy who wants to be rich and famous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's that too. Yeah, I got a just bit not, of a, a not bit of that, an ego. Not there yet. Um, right. <laughs> but no, it's it's just it's freaking cool. Like you know when you tell a friend of yours that oh yeah I can't make it to your birthday party and then they show up right. So yeah, I mean, yeah, like absolutely. somebody yeah. did this guy this weekend. You're, you're talking to the guy who lives and breathes on. <laughs> that kind of existence. Me? He's also the oh, guy that just leaves. Fucking play coy. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I had to just leave. <laughs> he, it's both sides of it from him, but he does very much like, well, I don't think I can show. I don't I don't really want to come. I can't show up. Yeah. And then you got to twist his fucking arm, the, hey? The Bradford Peterson is, well, I don't want to show up. I don't think so. I don't think I can. And you have to like beg and convince. And then eventually he's like, well... He shows up. Maybe, maybe he says he is. Maybe he doesn't. Shows up, gets every, uh, pours drinks down everyone's throats, and then leaves early. When it left, <laughs> gets everyone drunk and then leaves, and then goes without saying goodbye. There was actually I got to ask you about this. I, I know this is in December, but back in November, there yeah. we had a bet going on, and we never settled up on that. <laughs> That's true. Uh, <laughs> I, I, Andrew was contesting. I'm not contesting. We had a bet for those the, of the, you the who original, The original bet was, is Brad going to come and stay through the whole show? And then I really didn't think he was going to show up at all. And I said, <laughs> if he shows up and stays for, like we said, an hour. I was there for an hour. Then, then I'll concede. And then he did. And he did. <laughs> I stayed for over an hour. And then we had like, we were like layering the bet a little bit or, or contemplating it got, layering it. It, 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 was, it, it was starting to get yeah. convoluted by the end. Because it was like, all right, well, is there is there any addition to it? Like, do we get to coax him to stay or to leave in, in order to win? And if we do, like, does, does the stakes get higher and stuff? So thank you. So for, you were there thank for. Thank you for coming, Brad. But where was they where left was, before the Radiant? Like, I don't, that's something I don't Who are you? comprehend, but. Um, but so, so they were tired. question to you, yeah. why do you only show up for an hour? Uh, well, usually I don't. Usually I stay longer. I no, usually you just don't show up. <laughs> in any circumstances. He's going to give you a uh, bunch of, a, a bunch of bullshit oh, yeah. answers. Uh, I know, I just want to hear it. After you left three songs into the hour hand, or into weapons. No, a little, little less than that, or a little more than that, sorry. Not by much. No, I, I left early, but I, I stayed to at least the start of weapons. Past the and start of it. the weather was gnarly. The weather was gnarly, and I just came back from Steel Panther. I wasn't feeling the How live was show. That? How did you like that? Um, I've seen Steel Panther five times now. That was my least favorite musical performance. Uh, the stage, the show, show was really good. Uh, a friend of ours got picked on really good, and then another friend of mine got up on stage, which was awesome. Hell oh. yeah. Um, but they got rid of their bassist, which kind of sucks. Changes the dynamic of the whole thing. Yeah. How about, okay, how about Blackstone Cherry? How were they? Blackstone Cherry was very good. Yeah, yeah. they were very, very they good. They kick ass, dude. That was the only reason I was, because I was initially going to go as well, and I was on the fence, and that was kind of one of the reasons I was like, maybe I should go, and then I heard, I heard their new, Steel Panther's new songs, and I was like, I 
don't like it. Yeah, yeah. maybe not. I don't really like. I really don't like their new music. If I was, if I was, if I had gone to that show, it would have been for Blackstone Cherry, one hundred percent. It just, it didn't. We had too many shows going on, and it was like, I just need to stay home. So like, I fucking love Steel Panther's whole shtick, like. Steel Panther, Wheeler Walker Jr. Like I love comedy, like comedy yeah, music. Of, and what I really like about both of them is the music is actually the good. The music is actually good. Like yeah. it doesn't if you, suffer if you for the just comedy. like glam metal from the eighties, like if you love Poison and White Snake and you Bob, would love Steel Panther. Yeah, you love Steel Panther. Because yeah. they don't suck. And like when when Michael Starr comes out on stage, he literally walked the whole fucking length of the stage and high fived and fist bumped everyone that he could reach. Nice. <laughs> which I think is fucking awesome. Yeah. Um and they do like their little sticks. Like Statchel comes out and like he uses the kick drum and he does like a whole bunch of different like Metallica and whatever ACDC and and um, different little cover different things. little cover stuff, which is cool. But I mean, I've seen that so many times now that I don't know if I'll see Panther again. At least not for a while. I really need to see Wheeler Walker Jr. He'll never come to Canada. He'll never come to fucking Canada. But might have to go down to the yeah, states to, to see, him. see him. Probably. You know? Are you familiar with Wheeler know, Walker? I, only because of YMH. Yeah. yeah, I forgot he's on the yeah, He's a country music language. artist that like sings the most outrageous vulgar <laughs> like, music of all time. He has a song called Redneck Shit and he talks. It's like, whatever, it's the prehistoric podcast. Just so you I'm guys know, this it. is like the only eggnog here with no alcohol in it. Yes. <laughs> he talks about rednecks. He says, eating tater tots and pussy, sucking Mountain Dew and tits, and like just. Yeah. Goes on and on and yeah, on. Like Ridiculous. He's in acquired taste. fucking his. Yeah, he's got a song called Family Tree where he talks about like fisting your dad and sucking your grandpa's dick. And like it's. But the music is like. It, it's his it's first like album, really good classical country music. His first album is actually really impressive because through the album, he actually goes through and musically, like the instrumentals behind the lyrics are all representative of different eras of like classic and pop country throughout right. throughout like the years like from the th like 40s and 50s all the way all up the way to like the, the yeah 2000s yeah oh wow yeah. so you don't know who that is no musically it's, it's you gotta watch why and it's awesome right, so what he was was he was essentially a failed comedian yeah and he had this character in his stand-up show that was called wheeler walker jr that kind of had a following and one of his from what i remember one of his friends or one of his colleagues was like you need you to do just, that. Just do Wheeler Walker for a bit and see how it sticks. So, like, he never fucking breaks character now. When he, whenever he's on podcasts, anything like that, fully in character. Yeah, and he and his whole thing is, like, I'm the only real country music left. Like, fuck Florida Georgia line. Fuck all these guys. Like, they are fucking pussies. I, like, I'd <laughs> suck that guy's fucking dick and punch him in the nuts. And one of his, his first big song was, um, what the fuck is... Uh, Eating pussy, kicking oh, ass. Eating pussy and kicking ass. It's like <laughs> I do this, eating pussy and kicking ass. And the song goes like he finds a stripper, but she ends or finds a hooker, but she ends up being a, uh, a transvestite. Transvestite, which is not a <laughs> no. term anymore. But he's like, so I fucking sucked his dick anyway because I paid the money already. To suck his dick. <laughs> Speaking about, uh, hold on, I wrote one of them. Okay. Speaking of sucking my, dick, my, yeah. my <laughs> favorite thing about Wheeler Walker Jr. recently is he has like this amazing marketing team behind him. Oh my him. god, this is incredible. So his marketing team started a website or a Facebook page for a non-existent truck stop in Tennessee. <laughs> and like for months. For months and months. Posted without, like, they never mentioned Wheeler Walker Jr. And like posted just mundane, like not even like, like, us, like our orange juice is two oh, for five, like all this like, stuff. Like, <laughs> like everything that would lead you lead you believe these are like this is a legit just truck stop and wherever. Pictures yeah. of the manager. And then they start posting like a fuck, like a couple outrageous things happening. Like somebody left their condoms out in the parking lot and like they'd make funny posts and then they'd start sharing. And this fucking page is like up to 18, 20, 30, 40,000 followers. And then this post comes out. It's like, hey, just letting you know, whoever suggested to put Wheeler Walker Jr. on last night at three in the morning, that's fucking inappropriate. We listen to his music. His music fucking is way too inappropriate for this public place. And then all this backlash came from these Wheeler Walker Jr. fans because Wheeler posted about it. He's like, they this tried to shut me down this truck stop. Down, yeah. So all these Wheeler fans posted. And then so this truck stop talks about how they fired their manager because he didn't want to play Wheeler and they're 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 compromising and trying to not piss the fans off because he's got so many fans in this <laughs> in the area around the truck stop. They're like, we're losing business like crazy. And then Fuck yeah. and then so they made this huge apology and all this shit. And then now the truck stop's gone over the edge like 
they've got this whole storyline about how their one of their managers married his stepdaughter and they're having a baby <laughs> together. And like, but it's all fake. It's all like the it's most. It's all just a fabrication to get more traction. For anyway, it. it's called Jamie. Selena Fifty Two <laughs> Truck Stop. <Yeah. laughs> it was like, incredible. They've got like pictures of crack pipes. They're like, please quit leaving your anal plugs in the bathroom <laughs> and stuff like That's that. That's fucking cool, man. That's like marketing genius. Yeah, yeah no, guerrilla marketing. And if, if, sorry, you were going to say something, Joel. No, I was just going to say about sucking dick and eating ass. I see these cards here that say if you had to. So I don't know what this is. It's okay. So these are essentially would you rather that we, we've done. Uh, all, we don't have the trademark. Would you we've rather? done all the uh, big ones that you can think of. So these are just like prompts for that. Yeah. So yeah. would you rather uh, there's an outlet on your face that people always want to use their charger, want to charge their phones, to plug their phone in on your face. So you got an outlet, to right? So that's one, or two. You have to take the SAT over and over until you get a perfect score. Oh, the the USB port all day. USB port. Well, whatever. The phone, the phone charger. charger all day. I have to take the SAT one time and then that's it. No, you have to take it until you, until get, a you get a perfect score. Perfect score. And it's different every like it's different questions every time. So, so, I, it's, I, it's so I take the SAT <laughs> once. You have to keep taking it, let's say, every at least once a day no, I'm until a you... I'm a narcissistic megalomaniac. I would write the SAT once, complete the perfect score. Uh, no, like if you didn't, then you'd have to keep doing it. But I wouldn't. But he would. He's <laughs> 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 surgical yeah. precision. I see we're going like this. Yeah. That's a tough question. I don't... I, mm. Why is it such a tough question? Because I might AC uh, SAT. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you could also. And I don't I want people following me around to stick stuff in my face. Yeah. If, yeah. if, if you didn't get that perfect score and were like trapped and having to do it, that would like be one of those seven it'd layers like, of I was hell. Say, it'd, it'd be like Sisyphus pushing, pushing the boulder. Yeah. How long does it take? Yeah. How long does it take to take an SAT? I don't know. That's a good question. Two or three hours, maybe tops. Got to be. It's got to be yeah, like a three-hour thing, maybe. Three hours. Oh, you could even add on that and be it's like, you can't like you can't go to the bathroom, so you got to like hey, sit really, in your chair. We'll, we'll, we'll say you have to just you have to take the like you have to whatever the the guide is for for taking the SAT, whatever the parameters are, that's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. Maybe not every day. Is it multiple choice? Yes, they're yes. off scan. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just check all the boxes in five minutes and leave. That's against the spirit of the question. I don't care. You have to study. I'll take the, <laughs> See, I'll take the SATs thinks. every day. Done. Yeah. Go the spirit of it. I, I, eventually, you would get so studious and academic, <laughs> even in two years. You take 400 of them, you're going to get a perfect score if you have any reasonable amount <laughs> yeah, of Yeah, I'll do that because I don't want, I don't like. The phone charger thing's so forever. The thing is, you, don't, you don't have, to ever, let, you don't have to ever let anyone do it. The idea is it's like. You're out, and like you, and it's like you have a thing. It's like, oh, can I plug my phone into your face? It's more about people constantly asking. Well, I know, but and then they're interrupting you at the back room at the strip club. Like she's like, can I charge my phone? I'm like, you've taken me out of this now. Like I paid good money to be back here, and you want to charge your phone? <laughs> Only if it's recording as, you, yeah. as it's charged. Yeah. Jesus, can or give us one more that's better than that. Come well, on, it's just the cards, my man. I can't. He's actually uh, really good, Andrew. You're actually really, really good at making these up on your own. You should try one of those. I've, do I've, you know? I have I've, tried. But I think I've, he I've done them all. I've done them all. I like, think he cheats with those cards. I think he does too. I know he does. Andrew's a kiss here. Look at our help. Work. We've been trapped in here for days. Okay, I like that one. That's a good one. Is he Garth Brooks? <laughs> <laughs> we know that one from your YMH. Yeah. We know your mom jeans. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Tom Zagura. How to get a perfect score? Uh, how to pay, how to get a perfect SAT score? Tip, tips from top scorers. Fran is trying to. They're like study in school, stay in school. It's it's basically impossible. <laughs> it's like you're, <laughs> like, you're like less than one percent of people are able to do it. That's yeah, okay. Like they, they study for months. Yeah, but months, the, but the, but they write it one, two, or three times. If I have to write it. 365 times a year in four so years the top. The problem is that the SATs are randomized. Like no, I know, but if you, you're going to you take it four or 500 even times. Even if you fucking memorize, like you would. But it, it doesn't matter. Your, it doesn't your, matter. So Fran's saying even if you memorized all the questions, it wouldn't so even matter. High. Because like, <laughs> that's the problem. Is like, it's a three hour exam and the potential of you just making a mistake, like you, you thinking you wrote a number and you didn't write that number. <laughs> It, like, you can't cheat. It would be, not you cheating. son of a bitch. You'd have to be such a high-functioning human being. 
Like, yes. That's a pro- and like, who says I'm not? I am. Who I says am. I'm not? These yeah. These are not like these. The students they're talking about are like. They are next. Yeah, but Brad, like, these are these are North American students. Mark is from Europe, where everyone is like eighty yeah, no, no, no. percent more. That's right. Honestly, honestly, what does SAT Mark, stand for? I don't yeah. even know. Obviously, Mark uh, aptitude test. Standardized, standardized aptitude, aptitude test. test. Sure. Yeah, I'm not including Mark. Obviously. <laughs> it would just be s- surgical, yes, he would, European. Yes, he would do it once, but I'm for the <laughs> right. Thanks, Fran. There you go. Thanks I, for the okay. vote of confidence. There we go. I All think right. I've got All it. Right. We're Jesus. Back. Okay. Okay. So. I just don't know why you left a utopia to come to this hellhole. <laughs> <laughs> God. You're, you're, you're describing uh, Holland as a. Uh, but just all of Europe. All of Europe? <laughs> is it you told me? So all as of you Europe. get over the Atlantic, it's just perfect. So Russia, like, oh. fuck yeah, maybe. No, 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 that's getting into Asia. <laughs> Didn't Mark, Mark, you used to live, like, really close. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on this. But I know that we would talk about, like, the red light district quite a bit mm. in Amsterdam. Did mm. you, like, live close to there or some shit at one point? Anything in Holland is close. <laughs> so, the yes. Because from my place in the northeast of the country to Amsterdam, which is in the west of the country, is about a two and a half hour drive. Yeah, right. So you were about two and a half hours away from yeah. the red light. Like he was district. closer to the red light district than we are to Regina. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my dude. Okay, so you're you say that, but the red light district is in Amsterdam. Yeah, but every big city has yeah, a red, red light, light district. district. That's true. It's That's just the true. one in Amsterdam <laughs> is most accessible they and also, most famous. In, in Holland, I see. They also That's have true. Like, like I know. I yeah. Have. Disabled <laughs> yeah. Pe- they like pay for disabled people who get prostitutes and. Too. Well, why the hell not, man? <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not you saying know, it's a bad yeah. thing. I'm, I'm saying it's a good I'm, thing. Yeah. I'm all for prostitution. All for why not? And, and the reason for that is keep the keep the people off the street that wanna. Well, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, well, it's a business. So what's yeah? You're Oldest like profession. Yeah. Yeah. It's a if you run it le- like a legit business, give her. Let's go. Uh, and as long as it's not like exploitative and like sex, like people being trafficked, then all for it. Yeah. Great. Honestly, oh, if you if you're there as a tourist, just a to walk around, you'll see the the fourteen year old British kids uh, banging on the window. Uh, <laughs> right, right. They, yeah, they won't go in. They won't let them in. But it's it's funny to to watch. So here's one. I got a tenner. <laughs> Can you suck my dick? Here, he's not talking about fourteen year olds. Prostitutes. Prostitute. No, 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 no. no. Ones that are looking for that. Yeah, yeah, the 14, right. 14 year old visitors that are, yeah. Just be very, very clear. No, no, I, I yeah, 14 year old visitors. visitors no, no. Mark is not saying it's funny that 14 year olds are. <laughs> no, no. I'm no, glad no, no, you no. cleared that up. Yeah, thanks that's for what I was thinking no. first. I was there like, are oh, no, that's all right. Old, there are no 14 year old prostitutes that I know of. I'm talking about the obnoxious fucking British kids who fucking make fun of the prostitutes. Yeah. Yeah. Please answer. So, would you rather have clitorises all over your body? Fully functional, like clitori. sensitive cl- clitori, clitori all over your body. Or we have to enter the Hunger Games with everyone in this room. As entering, games. entering the Hunger yeah, Games. Yeah, I'm going Hunger Games. Hunger all Games. Day. You're, gonna, you're gonna kill. You're gonna kill everyone here. Uh, I'll versus be the last all fucking man. Yeah. Oh, it's actually killing, right? Yeah. Oh. I would actually put mm. money on it being me and Brad down to the final. Are you kidding me? I would murder all as of them. if. Oh, Andrew, you're too. As you're slow if. Big, big target. You're done. You don't like. I, you don't think I would use that to either to my advantage or be like. I'm, I'm way craftier than just like. <laughs> well, I would. You're I assuming. Would. You're assuming that you're gonna have a bow and, like that. This is like, yeah, you start, drop with. They start with a race to the weapon. Yeah, you start so with start. nothing. So whoever's the fastest has like. Thank you. I win. But that, it's also. <laughs> if, 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 you you know, the the, hung, the Hunger Games is the also thing, about being charming and winning support. You guys are running that's a big away. Part of it. You from guys who? are running away. <laughs> yeah, and I'm chasing you. That's how that's going yeah, down. We I would get l- dropped there in the middle. You guys all split, and I'm coming after you. I would just let you guys go through the weapons, and then I'm the only person who's maybe stronger than me is Brad, and I would just wrestle you for the for whatever weapon you had. You'd have to catch me first. Yeah, we'd already be at the weapon. Well, you'd be, you'd be at the weapon. We'd be standing way away from the weapon. There's, you're, 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 we'll not, you're not WCA so points. much faster than me. <laughs> oh God, I can't. I, I'm so much faster. You're not. You're not so much faster that you could like. Go through everything and get there before oh, I can. Like, I would I, still, I would still go Hunger Games. Can we, can we consider the clitoris <laughs> I, option? I, I mean, like, I don't think having a bunch of orgasms would be super terrible. No, but then you got all can these things wanting like, to penetrate you, just, like, you all the time. You, well, just a, clitor- just a clitoris, yeah, but, not a pussy. Just, yeah. just the like. Can you imagine just like rubbing your fucking arm and having the best orgasm? Yeah, well, what about those people that have constant <laughs> orgasms that want to kill themselves? 
But th- but this is like a little bit more control because it has to, you have to stimulate them to have it. It's not just have it. It's like you it's have not to like decide. Women it's have a clitoris, so, so they have orgasms. So you're just like a bunch of clits? let's let's say you have you twelve. Like let's a... say you have a dozen of them randomly on your body. Okay, well that changes the dynamic a little bit. Like all over can mean a lot of things. Like there, it could all over could be like every square inch of your fucking body is right. That's how I, that's how I visualize that. I, mm. I think it's got to be a little bit more tame than that to be like remotely reasonable. I think it's got to be like in the other option, you have to hunt human beings. That's what I'm saying. No, that's no. also cool. No, no. In the other option, you get to hunt human beings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, I'm yeah, surprised the Hunger yeah. Games was such a quick. Well, that's, <laughs> well, that's, that's <laughs> because I, I, like, I totally like, oh, I don't want to kill like, like uh, I knew Brad was like, I can't wait to fucking kill him. <laughs> friends, well, fuck those guys. Well, that's that's why but, like, I kind of came back to that because yeah, yeah, I was I was thinking I like a uh, freaking uh, I don't want to kill anyone here except for Brad. That's just like covered. That's Killing people that. versus having orgasms. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm going to have an orgasm if Death I kill someone. Oh. Oh. Man, yeah. oh. <laughs> no doubt. Um, fuck, yeah. yeah those are I fun. Where did you get this? Just in... Just the board game store, yeah. Hey, grab another one. Sure. What, Just, was, you, what was the game you were trying to get? It's called Pick Your Poison. Isn't that the same thing? Same idea. It's li- like both of these are... People would you rather without actually saying would you rather yeah for lawsuit yeah for legal reasons. okay um okay that's interesting <laughs> um so would you rather um you have to eat martin scorsese's eyebrows off his face or for i'm going to add a caveat to this because this is like a forever thing and that makes it too easy um for a month you have to wear headphones 24 7 playing the sound of old Japanese men using the bathroom. I'm gonna that go. Or eat the eyebrows off Martin Scorsese's face. Japanese menus in the bathroom? You, using the bathroom. So, like taking a shit. You have, to, you have headphones on 24 7 for a month. The audio of, of Japanese, Japanese excrement. Japanese people taking a shit. Japanese dudes, old men specifically. Well, their, their bowel moves are so clean. They're high veggie diet, high protein. Probably pretty quiet. In pretty, the yeah, pr- pr- pretty shameful thing for them. Yeah, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that for a month. I don't want to eat Martin Scorsese's eyebrows I off agreed. his face. Yeah, no, me yeah, neither. I that's agree. that's pretty I fucking. I need a Martin Scorsese pubescent. And then go wear, wear the headphones. <laughs> no, like that, now, now you'll be wearing now the you're headphones engaging as basket. you're eating Scorsese's eyebrows. Because if I eyebrows. came tomorrow and said, "Okay, Brad, you're doing this," you wouldn't be like, "Sign me the fuck up, man." I'm looking forward to both of those. <laughs> if, if I had the free time, I would. No. No, no, you wouldn't. Bullshit. <laughs> You're such a fucking liar. <laughs> Bring it around, man. <laughs> You're going to call me a liar and then say bullshit like that. I would. You, you fucking You fucking know that if you brought Martin Scorsese here tomorrow, I'd do it. You know I, I don't know. Because I'm just, challenging. There's acceptance. lots of lots of this. All I know is that there's lots of this. No. I'm a big don't fucking challenge you because I'll do it. Hmm. I would do it despite you. He, uh, Mr. I've, Martin Scorsese, if you're watching this, can you come over and settle this, please? Oh, I've literally seen him, like, at, at my, we have a cabin in Northern Ontario. We used to have dogs. The dogs have been dead for a while. We had old, like, dog, toy dog bone in a bin above a fridge, like, tucked away, fucking dust on the bin. And we're pulling it out, looking for something at a big party. And my mom and a friend's mom were like, Oh, that's gross. Through these bones are disgusting. Like, don't even touch them. And Brad's like, Oh, that's disgusting. Barely, no, no one challenged him directly. They just said, Oh, that's gross. So he grabbed the bone out of the this bone that my since deceased dog had chewed everything off of it. Dog been in a dog's mouth. Grabs the bone, licks it from bottom to top. Licks it just because someone said. Oh, that's gross. Don't touch it. My <laughs> grandma's like, oh, don't touch it. <laughs> my, my fiance and I were at my apartment building when I first moved to Saskatoon, and I dropped my sandwich in the parking lot. And I picked it up and started eating. And she's like, that's disgusting. You're eating that sandwich off the floor? So I went into the apartment building. I put my tongue widthwise on the railing and licked the railing all the way to the that's... top floor. Oh, dude. <laughs> Yo, and you didn't get sick? Fuck that. <laughs> wow. Wow. Brown's like, even if I did get and it sick, was I'd keep working. And it was an old railing. Kudos, man. It was Kudos. an old like fucking that's, railing. That's like insane. <laughs> that is insane. Have you, if somebody dared you to lick the under seat of a toilet, would you do it? 
Like, what would it take it's to not about to do it's, it's, it? His, his psychology is more subtle than that. It can't just be a, a dare. A dare, but it's there's got to be stakes, right? It's got to be constantly like, you can't. You, it's not about you wouldn't or it's like you can't well do yeah you, you always that. hear that saying like well like, for me it's like you know for, there's for, nothing dirtier than than a toilet seat or whatever for, and then for, like would you lick a toilet seat i've never saw anybody lick a toilet seat for, or the under of for, it. for brad never. It's, it's it's very much the oh you're telling me i can't do a thing yeah i'm gonna do that thing <laughs> tell them what 10 what, fucking times tell them just what, to show you that i can do it tell you were what, wrong what, Tell what fucking what's his face in high school with the crotch. Oh, so Brad. <laughs> this is like the most told story on the podcast. Okay, so so Brad is like Brad's fully a psycho. If you didn't get that already. <laughs> oh, we know. His his favorite move is like it's like someone. It's like oh, you want to fight? Not me? anymore because we're old. Well, no, no, but like when he was, it was like when we were virile, like, young man. He would get so angry about someone stepping up to challenge him to fight that he would. Because I'm not a fighter. No, he's not. A, so he would inflict Your lover. damage upon himself to be like, "Oh, you want, you think you're gonna fight me? I'll fight myself and show you." So the 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 stage is we we just played a fucking hard. It was like a late October football game. It was snowing. It was fucking cold. I just had my fucking knee destroyed in a football. Like it was like ever. It was like a down. Terrible fucking day. We had to drive like an hour and a half back to, Regina. back to Regina. Just all just like, fuck this fucking day. And we get there and we're showering. And it's like, not like a communal shower in a gym. It's like two like separate semi-private showers in our dorm. And Brad and I are showering. It's like the one good part about the day is like, oh, we get like unlimited amounts of nice hot water. We're just trying to like, just shower the terrible day away. And this kid comes in. It's a newer bathroom. And... This like fucking jet airplane engine of a fucking like dryer hands thing comes in and he dries his hands and we're both just like cringing because it's really loud and then he sits there and it's he's like so loud. so loud like, un like when I say jet airplane engine that's like <laughs> not an exaggeration it's so fucking loud so he comes in there and he 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 does it once so he's drying his hands like can't get mad at that he sits there and starts playing with the fucking thing going it, playing yeah. with it making the sound <laughs> and so Brad's like. Stop that. I don't like just wait till we're done. The sh like till I'm done in the shower. Just fucking stop it. Right. Keeps doing it. Keeps doing it. I, the context here is I had walked up there. I was on crutches. So my crutches are outside of the shower because that's how I got in the shower. Anyways, this guy keeps doing it. Brad tells him again. He says, if you don't fucking stop, eventually he's like, you don't stop. I'm going to come out there and beat the shit out of you. <laughs> and so the, so the guy does it again. Shower turns off. Brad, <laughs> towel around his waist. Runs out of the runs out of the shower. This kid grabs one of the crutches, one of my crutches, and, and in the hallway. is in the hallway, and he's holding it like he's going to hit Brad. <laughs> and I, I at that point, I had like put my robe on. I'd like limped out there with the one crutch, and I can see the see the light in Brad's eyes. He's like, "Oh, you want to hit me with a crutch?" He runs up to the guy, like grabs like, quickly, like without he, he before he can react, grabs a crutch out of his hands, and, like. Wrestles them for a second, yanks it out, stares them right in the eyes, and takes the crutch and goes, hoo, 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 hoo. <laughs> hits himself in the face with the crutch, bends the fucking crutch, hits himself in the face like four or five times, Yo. throws the crutch away. This kid is like, oh, and like runs away because he's like, I don't know, I'm I'm fucking fifteen years old, I don't want to handle this, <laughs> and like runs away because this this guy just like the psycho, the psycho essentially just beat himself up. To prove, like, oh, my, my you think you're going to hurt you you're going to hurt me with the crutch? pre-Fight Club or after <laughs> Fight Club? Well, he hadn't seen Fight Club. It would have been, been after, but. Uh, but, no, it was just, like. It would have been 20. At the first couple of times, I was so reasonable. I'm like, man, please you were all, yeah. please stop. Like, can we just not do this? And then it's like. Oh, like, he, he was the asshole in that situation, for sure. <clears throat> he was the aggressor, so to speak. And I just, like, and we had another, in, uh, long story short. My my buddies and I thought we were cheating in beer pong. He's like, I'll fucking knock you. I'm like, oh, I'll knock myself out. I just fucking hammer he myself. Stared at himself, punched himself in the face, until, gave himself a black eye. Until I was like just about fucking passed out. And then we fucking left. And I woke up in the morning, my fucking pillow was glued to my face. Because I'm like, I don't want to hit my friend. Because I know I'm drunk and I don't want to hit him. But I'm so fucking mad at you challenging me that I'll show you what it's like to fight me. And then you can take a swing at me if you're ready for that. Yo. It's like, you it's can't like kick my... Intimidation move. You can't kick my ass because I can't even kick my ass. Joel, 
It's time to go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we're done. Bye, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, the, the idea of just fighting just pisses me off so much. It's so like, yeah, I, unless I, it's like you know I've a seen, UFC match or a boxing match or like organized, right? Then it's so. I've then seen the light go, switch but. in this man's eyes, where <laughs> it's it's like, it's like okay, we're having a confrontation, like okay, and it's like, oh, you're gonna like you're gonna try. You think you can hurt? It's like it's like almost like a chest. Like oh, you think you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna hurt me? Oh, you think you're gonna fight me? You want to fight me? This is what it's like to fight me. <laughs> I don't think I don't think he'd lick a toilet seat for twenty bucks. There's no fucking way. That's too not enough money. I no, don't I don't think, think so. What's that? I don't think it's. I don't think twenty bucks. I don't even think twenty. It's bucks not about like I don't even want twenty bucks. I'll fucking. You'll just fucking do it. <laughs> I don't think you would. Though. I don't That's know the why thing. I, I think you're just saying so that so I changed the topic. No, no, he he won't. I don't think he will. He won't. I think he he's can't. just talking shit because the cameras are rolling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not that he wouldn't. It's that he just can't because like it doesn't. I, it doesn't work about some things, but you know, like I, I, I won't go lick my own toilet seat because it's too clean. Now I like think we should go for supper and then we'll go to the bathroom. I'll like the fucking other side of the toilet seat. I don't think you would though. I give a shit. I don't think you would. Even if I took you out to the most fanciest or even no, no, the most even garbage. The, yeah, the, even the most like garbage uh, sub- diner or whatever. Subway or I, would, I don't take I don't a shit in the toilet would. and then. You can lick the seat out. No, then he knows what what's going on there. No, we need we need like com- complete but, but anonymous, coming, right? And yeah. so coming back, you know, like Truck you've stop. heard that Truck expression stop. before, like you wouldn't lick a toilet seat or whatever. I've just never seen anybody do it, and for that reason, I don't think that you would. It's just you don't see it very often. You don't see that. It's just an expression. That's no, all I it is. I, I, I mean, honestly, the railing of the apartment building is probably dirtier. So, from you think a, so? like a scientific standpoint, probably the hands. Oh, I'll still like, like the toilet seat. I'm just saying I think the railing. No, but here. you won't though. That's just it. You won't lick the toilet seat. That's the problem. Oh god. It's I, lots of this. It's a lot yeah. of talk. That's just what we're doing. Uh-huh. My point. Hey, man. Uh-huh. <laughs> prove, prove us wrong. <laughs> change, my, change my mind. After this. Uh-huh. I guess he's gonna lick a toilet seat. Where are we eating? <laughs> um Hey, I got some. Uh, we have some big news that I'm oh, kind of yeah, excited to oh, fucking. Oh yeah, we didn't even uh, get to that. We, have, we brought yeah. an exclusive here for you guys. So mm-hmm. chips in the bowl, dog food. Yeah, dog. you betcha. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, so starting December twentieth, you guys, Mark and I, like Funky Moose Audio, we're the ones that are going to be hosting the um, open mic nights at the Capitol. That is exciting. Fucking a right, dude. You did have a meeting, a meeting with Mitch. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Nice. We sat with Mitch and uh, we kind of talked out some details and stuff like that, and uh, we're pretty excited about it. So we're gonna yeah. try and you know get that ball rolling, do some promos on it and stuff, and just let the people know. Uh, yeah, we're going to do it every Tuesday and we've got just exciting things in the plans. We have ideas. Um, want to hear some ideas from you guys too on what we could do, but fuck yeah, dude. And this really came about because of Funky Moose, the podcast, and, um, with the open mics, we also want to, um, you know, get some traction for Moose Fest. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it just seems like another thing that we can that we would love to be a part of like in the scene in the industry yep. right and well, and like and you I, guys are so much about like giving a platform for these independent artists and like helping like yeah it's not build, about building us. them up and, it's not about us yeah and like i think uh, talus actually had a really good we were talking at moose fest this past year about what you guys were doing and how it was different from other festivals and events and what he said was like i can't remember which festival he was talking about but like X whatever festival, that's just a party. And parties are fine, but Moose Fest is like, it's something different. It's a, it's a show. Like, it's something that's, it's curated by people who care about the bands, care about the music. Thanks, Talis. Dude, yeah. I love you, buddy. Uh, it, basically, his, his point was like, a, a lot of other festivals, like, they're a party. And a party is fine if that's what you want to go to. But right. this is something more than that. It's got more significance and, and brings more to the table than just like, Oh, we're gonna go get fucked up in the in a field and have a good time. Yeah, and nothing wrong with that. I'm not shitting on that. That's yeah. that's its own thing. Yeah, and that's like, that if, has if a that's place. You, that's that has a place. That has a time. <clears throat> I would even go to that event sometimes and enjoy it. But like festivals like Moose Fest and like Dog Patch and like other right. festivals that 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 we've attended and and people that we know who are doing that kind of thing, 
when you put the music first and give a fuck about the artists and yep. the people involved, it's it's something special. It's something different than other people than other events that people might be used to. Dude, yeah, that's 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 that means a lot. That that's I noticed, I haven't, You know what I mean? I haven't heard that until now. That was that's cool. Thanks, Talos. Talos yeah, was yeah. Talos was the one who who because we were we were chatting and he yeah he said that and it really stuck with me because I totally agreed with everything he said. I'm like yeah, that's exactly it. You guys put it wasn't just about oh who can we get that's going to sell a bunch of tickets it was like it wasn't no, how can we, at all how can we support these bands that we love and also provide an incredible show and experience for the people who are there who maybe don't get a chance to see these haven't seen these bands yeah. or don't get to see live music i, I think uh, for me potentially a, a controversial opinion but what i think is uh it it's it's not necessarily that every independent artist deserves all this so much support. No. Because some people don't put in the work. That's right. And, and they don't try and build the connections. And sure, you're great musicians in your own light. And maybe 20 years from now, you want to look back on your career and say, oh, I kind of did my own independent music thing. But there, I find there are so many artists who are kind of on the same level or the same scope of the people who aren't trying that hard. They are really trying hard. And that's the people that I want to reach out and support and be like, yep, you guys really give a fuck. We really give a fuck. How can we help each other out? How can we yeah. help you guys out? You're taking it seriously, yeah. so yep. that makes me be like, hundred percent. Focus on that a little bit more, as opposed to somebody who's like, I don't know, been in the game for maybe thirty years and still, you got to twist their arm to hit an open mic night, yeah. and they're wondering why they're not getting that phone call from that big record label like well it's it's a grind man it is a hard yeah. grind and you're not gonna make any money at it at, for the first 10 15 years of doing it yeah absolutely. you'll you still gotta have a nine to five job and you do that on your off time like i've, I've seen that so much and to, to get back to why we did moose fest is it 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 was kind of a natural thing because the first one we organized was um we i mean i'm from holland it's a festival country, so. Isn't that weird? <laughs> <laughs> and, and festivals are a big thing there, and I've well, always. Tomorrowland is one of the biggest festivals in the world, and that originated in Belgium. Belgium, oh, it's Belgium. Okay. Yeah, so adjacent too, but not. Yeah, but yeah. that's fucking giant. Yeah, yeah, that's like the big. It's literally the biggest festival in the world. Yeah. So, but I've 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 always told myself that I wanted to organize a music festival at some point. I've never, you know. Ha made steps to yeah, to the, do anything. The stars hadn't aligned for that. Yeah, to... exactly. So in twenty twenty one, yeah, right? yeah, last year, um, Joel and I have been talking about it on the show here and there with uh, Earl Pereira from the Steadies, and um, uh, the second time we had him on, I don't know, I, I don't remember how it came about, but he was something along the lines like, "Hey, that music festival, you guys." Oh no, he he called you. He ended up calling. Yeah, he. T I don't remember. He messaged anyway, it me was, once. One. It was some late <laughs> summer's night, and he. It was just as simple Friday. as. It was hey, a Friday. I remember We've got that. Uh, the Steadies have this day open. If you guys ever want to, you know, get that music festival thing that you guys keep talking about, like we have this day available. And that was that, 20, that, that was twenty twenty one that you guys had like the pilot at the Bellevue Hall. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, and that's what kicked it off. So from there, we made a couple more phone calls to some past guests we had on the show and it was like a, you know a couple yeses and it's like i guess we're doing this and within a couple hours of that first message from earl we had three bands locked in we had the venue locked in we had it all set up like within three hours yeah. we're like i guess we're doing this let's go and because then, we had been talking about it for so freaking long we yeah. knew what we had to do we just kind of needed that little push and like, we were just go. coming out of covid it was still in covid actually uh but we were just it was just perfect that August seventh was just in a in a window where things you know, were better, restrictions yeah. were lifted. Yep, yeah. yeah. people were itching to do something. Yeah, <laughs> at that point it was like I think the the uh, like the government was allowing you to have up to like 150 people in one yep. in one building at that time. And then I was like the day of Moose Fest, like the day before they lifted that entire. Yeah, yeah. it was like the week of. Yeah. So like yeah. that yeah. was the thing. It was like, hey, at the very most we can only sell 150 tickets, and that's fine. That's it is what it is. But then that week, you know, we knew that could happen where they opened it up which they did which opened it up to 250 i think mm -hmm. at that point in time and yeah that was even better and Hell then yeah, dude. And the then, first year was so great like as just sorry to cut you off but yep. speaking as someone who attended and yeah we were like working we were filming or whatever but we also really got to like enjoy the festival and 
that first year was awesome. Like the, the lineup was great. Yeah. The dude. timing was like everyone was I, – I personally, at least speaking for myself, was itching to go to a show and live music. I, I'm Obviously, we were passionate about music and live music specifically. And getting to experience that again after not for so long was just like such a refreshing thing. And it was full and there were lots of people there, but it wasn't – packed to the point of being mm -hmm. uncomfortable it was just yeah. it was just the right amount of yeah. of, of people yeah i think everyone had just an absolute blast of a time i heard nothing i don't yeah. even this year the two years that we've done it i'm not aware of like anybody saying anything bad or about it no. you know the, the I think first there was year one guy who got kicked out for being way too drunk but and, oh, that and, was after. You, and you want to know what? That's why we hired security to exactly. handle that shit. Yep. That's why that I'm was I'm pretty there. sure he'd be the only guy who was like, fucking bullshit, bad time. It's yeah. like, well, don't get drunk and obnoxious and you don't get kicked yeah. out. Don't yeah. run up on stage if you're not paid to be on stage. Like, get yep. the fuck off of there, dude. What are you doing? Exactly. But yeah, so the that was the first year. And then during the first year, the, the, the whole event, we were already looking at each other like, okay, we're doing this again next year, but bigger. Yeah. So we went outdoors with a real stage and, you know, have lots of room. And um, we kept telling each other, like, if people don't show up, well, at least we have a cool party in our backyard. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's kind of the approach we're we're taking again next year. Yeah. Like, we we don't necessarily want it bigger yet because we don't want to bite off more than we can I chew. Do, but he doesn't. No. <laughs> Shut Reasonable. the fuck up. <laughs> No, I, mean, I, I, I respect mean, have the to, of that. I, I think you have to build something like this gradually because um, oh, yeah. I've, I've seen festivals going too big too fast and Absolutely. they bombed. All, and the, all the ones that fail fly like Icarus. They fly they, too close they, to the yep. sun yeah. yep. and they have like a crazy big year the first year or two mm -hmm. and then it's not sustainable or it's sustainable from the perspective of like if we sell X number of tickets. So they have to like – they can't do any like – it's all just to get a bunch of assholes out there. That's yeah. what I'm trying to get yeah, to. Yeah. Yep. Like they get a bunch of people who don't give a fuck. They're just there to party. And yep. those people are the people who fuck shit up the most. Yep. yep. For and everybody else. If you look at like a, a festival like Boonstock, which like had all this potential, had tons of people interested, but it just got that craven crowd, as people in the festival yeah. industry like to say. And again, there's nothing wrong with the craven crowd, the party crowd. If you're set up and equipped to handle that mm -hmm. but if you're not it's a fucking disaster right yep. and you just have a bunch of people fucking shit up yeah and ruining everything and you're not equipped to manage that and it's just it's just a nightmare for everybody they have a bad time they wreck everything yep. the artists have a bad time so the last thing you want to do is like try to grow unsustainably and have yep. this audience of people who doesn't mesh with what you're trying right. to do that's and, right and we actually felt that because we were reaching out to sponsors for this year and there i had a few conversations with a few sponsors that were giving me those questions like okay um are the bands being paid and i'm like of course that's that's the, those are the number one priority okay because i've sponsored a, um, um, a music festival and the bands never got paid and then is the town in agreement of of what you're doing? And I'm like, yeah, they're actually supporting us to do this so we can get people into town. Right. Um, because again, that sponsor was sponsoring an event where um, the organizers uh, rented the grounds and never told anyone what they why were. they were renting the grounds. And then they did this music festival and pissed everybody off. And the so, town was yeah. not on board. You know, so yeah, it's. It's those kinds of festivals that make it look bad for festivals well, yeah. like what we're trying to do. Like we just tried to make sure all our T's and were crossed and I's were dotted. Like yeah. what what could go wrong? Well, so you could have some dickheads in the crowd starting fights and stuff. Well, we should probably get security then. How yep. much does that cost? Is it worth it? Yeah, liability sake. Let's go. Liability, insurance. We need insurance. What if somebody fucking ODs or something? Yeah. Right? So then it's like everything, the costs just add up. Oh, yep. we need a stage. Well, how much is that? Jesus, let's go. We need to bring this to out in the middle of nowhere yep. from the city. So like we're like it just everything stacks up, man. So that's for people out there we're like, "Oh my god, $55 a ticket to see yeah. eight bands in a day that are all headlining acts. That's a lot of money." You think that $55 like even covers the one band? Like, no, no dude, there's so many other expenses well, I, than just I, the I band. I think the other big thing for me is like, I like that. I like that it, 
it's 55 bucks a year too because it really i think to people who know what they're talking about it shows that it's not a fly by night thing because it's like if i'm showing to his vessel it's going to cost me 25 bucks to see eight bands i'm like who are these eight bands what kind of shit is yeah. going on especially here? if you don't recognize any of the names on the or even maybe just one name on the on the bill it's like uh, what's going on here um it's it's also um the people that did show up I, I like i talked to a lot of them that were there and and a lot of them are actual music fans yeah you know they're and not then that's then that's what it's about yeah they're they're not the people that that are there for the party they're there for the music yeah and i, yeah. I like i and like that's that the a people, lot. and that ultimately that's what you know growing sustainably is about is finding those people yep. And speaking to and not and making it clear, like, yeah, we're here to have fun and yeah, it's fine to party, but like that's not the reason that we're here. Yeah. Like we're here to enjoy and support the music. Yes. yes. And I, I yeah, I think like again, I don't want to totally like shit on Nest Creek because I think there's lots of great things that happen there. But I feel like one of the things that's that has been a conversation in that because Nest Creek in a lot of ways is like the the like festival for like the like the, the big festival for the festival community in yep. in Saskatchewan. Mm-hmm. I think that one of the conversations that's been having had in that community and like is an ongoing conversation is you know about getting the right people to Ness. And like mm-hmm. again, they talk about the Craven crowd. I think that's just like a euphemism for the people who are there just to like mm-hmm. fuck shit up. Th- fuck shit up and, and and party. It's not about the spirit of whatever Yep. Of the what event it, is. With the intent and was, for Nest yeah. Creek, yeah, it's about the music. It's also about like the whole like connecting and having an experience as a group of people and all that stuff. And yeah, I, I think that's an ongoing conversation in that community. And they're Your drinks very, look empty there, guys. No, 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 I'm still drinking. They're an Relax. established, they're an established big festival, and they're still having that ongoing conversation about like how do we promote the right quote unquote right people uh showing up to make the event what yeah, we want it to it's be. It's like so right and like mark and i the two the two years that we've done this already it's like ah uh, how do i say this it's it isn't about like it's In not French. about the money it, it's not about money and nope. I'll, I'll be truthfully honest on this the two years that we've done it we've legit broke even like i'm not even talking one dollar in the plus like all the money that was great. there, like, is what it took to put what, this on. From, that's what, I, exactly from what I understand what with events, that's, like, you're doing I, that's, much better than most events do. And that's like, why we say it's a success. It's yeah, like, 100% you know, we, didn't, it we didn't lose anything and we had this great time. From what, I, from what I understand, if your event-based business is successful after year five, it's, like, if you're breaking even after year five, you're, it's, like, Wow, that's well, that's that, and incredible, that, right? And that's where and that's it comes back years. to him saying, like, you know, we don't want to bite off more than we can chew right now. Like, we know how yeah. much it takes to do what we did last year, so that's our that's our starting off point. Okay, we need X amount of dollars to do anything remotely similar to that. Yeah. And this is we how much we how need. Much, we've got yeah. a we've got a plan already, and then but it can well, alter. Like well, maybe one, we just don't have that kind of money anymore, right? Like, well, one thing I see that I think it, the reason that the our triumvirate works our partnership brad fran and i why we work so well is in our own ways we're all kind of big personalities and we all each of us kind of has certain strengths and weaknesses that are filled gaps that are filled in by the other members of the partnership and i think with with you guys it's like you're you you're wanting to like reach for the stars and like go big and mark is like hey like maybe we need to like He's a he's my ball yeah, and chain, dude. Yeah. But, but like, you need both of those. Things. You need someone who's going to push the boundaries and be like, "Oh, but we need to be focused on this and like do it bigger and better." Because that's the kind of mentality that like has people interested and wants people to come. And it's like the excited and like excitement and the the pizzazz. But you need someone who's going to bring it back down to earth. That's going to like balance that real. out and keep it real, so yeah. it actually can be a be a like grounded, successful event. And it's like without one or the other, With- you're with, with Joel, I've, I've you, need to, you need another one there. That yawning is unacceptable here. No, I gotta have a drink though. With uh, with Joel, I've I've learned to say instead of no, I've learned to say yes, but. <laughs> yeah, and I don't do well with no's. Yeah, yeah, that's I, no is not in my vocabulary. But that's the, I think that's a, that's a good like we have a like I, I obviously it's a different dynamic, but you know there are lots of similarities in that you know we yeah like it, it's it's. 
it, how, how we end up meshing together. Like if you think about individually who we are, you'd be like, that group of people is never going to work well together in a creative or business sense. But when you bring us together, it actually, we flow really well together. We kind of complement our strengths and weaknesses, complement each other really right. well and mm -hmm. allows us to do what we do because when, we complement each other. And you guys other. like clearly mm -hmm. respect one another too. And I think that's- 100%. That's, that's got to be the base. If, if that's not the basis, then you're- Yeah. Then you're fucked from the get-go. I think yeah. so too. That's what we have too. Yeah. I respect you. I, re I respect your opinions. <laughs> I'm just fucking. <laughs> Go lick a toilet seat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, we're gonna head out and lick a toilet seat. <laughs> one, one he's last not, one of these. He isn't. But he's he full of shit. He's he not doing it, you guys. He's it's not, not happening. No. Um, so, but wait, I want to toss it back to that open mic thing there yes, again please. too. So like, I'm pretty pumped up about this. This is like new news to us as well too. Like about so many freaking ideas about this, and I want to do a soft pitch to you guys on camera if that's okay. Try pay attention. Here's one of the ideas that I have. Is, uh, <laughs> is, uh, as he's like putting the monitor down. Um, one of the ideas I have, if we I'm do the this, mark, so. if we say like, it, it's going to be every Tuesday night, right? Yes, but let's but, say like maybe on in the third or fourth month of doing this, maybe something that we can do like with you guys and like have it filmed and make that like a big event where we're like filming yeah. shows at the Capitol of these open minds. We'll bring back, hey, the, these were the best artists of the last two months. And then they can like maybe almost like not a, I don't want to call it a battle of the bands, but these were like the best of the best of the, of the first quarter we can of 2023 and then get some Skull Creek sessions. Yeah, my, my thought, you know what I mean? Like my I, thought I was want do, my you thought was doing part like, of this with us. My thought was doing something in the vein of this, of like having it be part of the Skull Creek sessions and having it be brought to you by like the Funky Moose open mic night at the Capitol kind of thing. Right. And then doing like true live take with just like, again, maybe we bring Aspen in to help with sound off the board exactly. or something. And have a crowd and, there. And have a, have a crowd, but it's like, it. the focus is like, the focus is on the video, on on doing one song from each band and have like three or four bands perform. And like, they can perform beyond the video, but the focus is of the night maybe is on getting that live, getting that live video Dude, I love for it. a Skull Creek session. And then we have, from our perspective, we have three or four videos that we can put out as Skull Creek sessions. Yeah, and from your side, th that ties in promotionally and there's you other ways that that ties in. we can do a podcast from the Capitol? We can, we can do we anything. Can do anything yeah. Right? So yeah, maybe yes, we, could do, we could do like, <laughs> as the show is going on, maybe it's like, you know, that 10, 15 minute banter in between I, and that's like the wrestling, like you want to be Jerry the King Lawler? Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. I, th I think what would make more sense would be doing like the following day or sometime that week after the show, doing like a retrospective on the sh on that night and being like, we would have clips from their performance to potentially throw in there and doing like, a, yeah, so whatever bands performed on Tuesday, we thought this and this was really good. We thought this thing sucked or... Yeah. Like giving like more of a like upon reflection of that night. Dude, I'm fucking so we... pumped for this. It's going to be awesome. There's so many ideas that we can run through this. I, I want just, you guys just... to know that if you're watching this, we probably have all that figured out already. Yeah. Any, but, anything we said, but we're, we're open not doing. to suggestions. If you guys have <laughs> thoughts, <laughs> ideas, yeah. to, our stuff, viewer, li to, to our viewer, we're not live anywhere, but <laughs> yeah. make sure you live tweet. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. know that yeah. reference, dude. He said um, it again. I did. I, I get to say it. It's like certain other words that other communities use. That's my. Well, word. you've used those too. No. Nope. One of the episodes. That, 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 that has been, ex that has no been expunged. So they were doing this you show back Absolute son of a bitch. You didn't hit no, no. show a while back. No. Here, wait, wait. I got, <laughs> let me try and tell. <laughs> oh, right. I, no, I know. You know this one, right? I think so, yeah. Let's refresh the memory of the oh, people watching. I don't watching. even really remember. This, I just know that Andrew said live tweet us. And we're like, we're not live, idiot. <laughs> and then. He was. I oh, can. He, he's, the, the, he's got a much the, the, better. The point of con, the point of contention is. I don't know where Fran stands on this. This, Brad contends that I said, live tweet. Brad and Fran contend the same I, thing. 
And my my assertion is I, I never said live tweet. I said tweet at us. I'm not fucking retarded. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to use the R word. I'm not fucking retarded. I knew we weren't live. I said tweet at us. You thought we were live. No, I never did. Um, so this has been an ongoing thing. We we, we look back at the tapes. Also we don't know for sure. A who, Key and Peele sketch. No, we're not going into You know that. what's a really was, good one I'm into right now? That's something I don't feel good about, and you bring bring it up constantly. <laughs> constantly? This is once a year. On the podcast, I mean, constantly on the podcast. <laughs> I don't even know if we brought it up last I year. Don't def- I don't have the tape, Fran. I think I don't you brought defend, it. I think we talked about it on the one I was yeah, on last year. I don't defend that specific. Like, I, that wasn't a positive moment in my life. <laughs> Why not? Because I made a mistake and it no, was not. No, no, that but can't it wasn't be seen a mistake. It still, even if it was a mistake, it still makes sense because they're watching it live. Like you air it, and you know that that part's going to be playing at like nine fifteen is when I say, yeah. But at nine fifteen of them seeing that, you just check your Twitter, and all of a sudden, why is my Twitter going off? Well, that's because that just aired, and you told them to tweet you. So that's what the fuck. I going think on. so too. So can I don't we, think no, it was I, a mistake. Can we move on? Say it. Yeah. Can let's, we, move let's move on. We can. <laughs> oh, uh, and he's French. It's fine. They don't care about right. that. Veux-tu que je le um, fini le conversion en oh, français? Hang on. Uh, n- n- no. 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 I got, well, I'll show you a pic. Est-ce, okay. Est-ce que tu veux châteler mon cornichon pour 500? Ben, <laughs> je peux le manger pour zéro dollar. <laughs> no. Um, manger, uh, see, here's the thing, you guys, Brad's always talking about how he knows all this French and everything. And every single time (laughs) I see Brad, he never has anything new in French to say. It's all the same bullshit. It's it's like, oui, oui, hello, hello, hello. And it's like, you don't know French, dude. Uh, I am. He doesn't. He really doesn't. Parisian trying to translate for a uh, <laughs> Quebecois as uh, well. Uh, I almost wore a uh, Quebec t-shirt just for I you. I don't know how you people speak uh, like John Kretschmer. Yeah, I can, uh, I can ik, do a French accent, no problem. Als ik Nederlands spreek, dan uh, Fran kan dan wel, uh, snap dan wel wat ik zeg. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you got the spirit of it. Uh, thank oh, you guys so much for joining us on the Stand Up That's Podcast. Exactly it, it was Le Cardin. <laughs> yes, the Stand Up Podcast, episode three. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Um, uh, you'll be seeing more of these guys, I'm sure, on our channel. Hell yeah. And across Come the check board. us out Tuesday nights at the Capitol Open Mics. When does the Sit Down Podcast air and how can they find you? Monday evening, or... Monday mornings at, uh, what is it, 8.30? 8.30 a.m. 8.30, we uh, schedule new episodes, and uh, you can find them either by going to funkymoosrecords.ca under the media tab or fmr.fm slash podcast. Oh, uh, one more thing. Sorry, friend. One more thing. We also have Funky Moose Radio. So if you guys just want to go out there and Google Funky Moose Radio, Radio you don't have to Google it. You can go to funkymooseradio.ca. There you go. Go to funkymooseradio.ca and just there's no commercials on there. It's just music, man. Uh, you scroll down to the bottom. It's, you can request a song. It was uh, basically my personal playlist based on Radio Free Roscoe, I think, which is a Canadian television program from the early 2000s. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, you guys. I love <laughs> the shit out of you guys. Don't Thank you so much. Started, but we'll catch you in Appreciate episode. It. A four, four where we're gonna be alone, maybe what? just Andrew and I. Uh, we're gonna do a tub cast from and the tub. analyzing oh. magic tricks. I uh, know we're gonna do it from the tub. Uh, oh. We're gonna do two men in a if two. You, if you can find, if you can find a tub that will fit me, let alone both of us. Yeah, I'll a hot do it. tub. My dude, sure. you would totally fit in my bathtub. No. Yes, sir. <laughs> don't give him ammo, Joel. You're you're not helping the situation. <laughs> no, he won't fit. I I don't fit in the standard hot tub. Andrew will not fit in your tub. Anyways. Thank you so much. Goodbye. I said it's clawfoot tubs. Love you guys. Adios. Bye now.